Hey construction legends, in the bustling heart of the Big Apple, there are two legends by the names of Frank and Bo. They're massive in the construction industry. They have a huge podcast called Building Talk. They recently had me on the Building Talk podcast. It's one of my favorite episodes. It's a lot of fun. These guys are absolute a hoot to hang out with. In the episode, we talk about why you don't necessarily need a lawyer in your corner, why it can slow you down, what is important with negotiating your contracts, why bad paperwork can cost you tons and tons of money and at the end frank goes to what the f with me which i didn't know what that was but it means what the frank and they ask me some funny questions i think you'll enjoy this episode go for it it's key and brennan with quantum contract solutions welcome welcome right this yeah. guy talk about multinational multi-global no, whatever you want very to call impressive. It. you know what very impressive. us yes canada yes australia yes and New Zealand. And New Zealand. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Very, very impressive. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, you know, we, we've been we've been trying to get you on now. Oh my right? God. We've been going back and forth for months. It's been right. at least a few months. Oh, uh, are you kidding me? Yeah. I think it's the time zone. It could be. Or maybe we were just drinking too much Foster's that time. That could be. Too. Yeah, that, that too. Yeah. <laughs> that too. So without further ado, absolutely. Thank you very much. Key in. Nice. Hey, there you go. Fine. I got it. Maybe we'll do I don't know if it'll work, but we got it. Oh, yeah. Is that applause? Yeah, it's applause. I don't know if it'll record. But... Well, we'll see if it does. Yeah. If not, pretend it's applause. There you go. So, who is, what is Quantum? Who? Oh, so me. Um, let's go who. So, I'm the CEO of Quantum. And my background is is construction generations at this stage, right? So, my granddad really? owned, owned a construction company in Galway, the west of Ireland. Actually, do you know what? Do you want to know something really interesting? Talking to you guys. So we we did the family three there recently, and this wow. is totally we this is totally off topic, right? And no, um, no, go ahead. We did the family tree, and back in the thirties, or yeah, around the thirties, my granddad's brother went to the states. Or oh, my grand, uh, sorry, my so yeah, my great granddad had a, another son, and yeah, he he went to the states. We kind of never really saw from for her of those guys again. And um, it turned out his son, this is this blew my mind, was a guy called John Brennan. And John Brennan turned out to be the head of the CIA under the Obama industry, uh, on the Obama um, administration. administration. Wow. And, I, I, and then literally, I was like, I don't believe it. I Wikipedia him. He came from Roscommon, which is beside Galway, and that's where they they came from. That's where his dad came from. I was like, I don't believe it. So I got got some ties to the US, but my granddad had a construction company in Ireland. He advised, you know, I wanted to be a contractor. Like he was he was basically uh -huh. a general contractor, and that, that's where I wanted to go. They said, don't do that. It's a terrible idea, right? You should you should go and you should be on the client side your side of the fence actually you should go and be an owner you should be right. you know up the, up the chain and so that's what i did uh, i went to university master did all that sort of stuff and then as that was happening my job essentially turned out to be all about costs and contracts and what that meant was i was dealing with sub trades contractors all of the time for owners for large organizations who are building something or maintaining something refurbishing something and it was me i saw putting these sub trades out of business it was me wow. reject rejecting invoices saying no to changes delays right. because of the way these these are, were built and then eventually it got to the stage where i felt that my granddad would be like, okay, this is, I don't, I didn't feel like I was doing good for the industry. And I don't, yeah. I didn't think he would have been proud of, of the way that what I was doing. And candidly for me, doing that every day was waning on me because mm -hmm. a lot of these guys would go and do the work. They do a great job. They're just, their paperwork and contractual skills were terrible. And then they wouldn't get paid for it. Right. And then we get paid for it. They wouldn't sure. get paid for it. Right. And so like, I mean, from the bigger company's point of view, well, it's not our fault right that you've not done your paperwork the contract says you're supposed to do this thing you didn't do the thing like what do you want us to do like we can't pay you and so that's when quantum came where i said well i know how all of these bigger companies work and if i can design a system and a framework to help the sub trades or the subcontractors or the contractors have right. so many different names navigate the insides of the bigger companies they're gonna get way they're gonna have contracts that have way less risk in them which means they're gonna stay in business longer they're gonna have better mm -hmm. margins and if they manage their contracts properly, 
they're going to have much better cash flow. And cash flow, it's not cash is king in construction, cash yeah. flow is king in, in construction. And if you have good cash flow, you can be a good business. And so that's kind of where Quantum came about. So what we do is we help subcontractors, contractors, where typically they would have had to have gone to expensive lawyers or hire someone in-house. They don't need to do that right. anymore. Right. They just get us on a, on a retainer that's very affordable. And then we can review all of their contracts, make sure they don't sign anything stupid, basically make sign they negotiate their contract to be in their favor, to remove some risk out of the contract and ultimately make more money on their projects. Wow. Well, wow. because the risk sure is. is always there. Of and course. what he just said, uh, makes all the sense in the world, the cash flow, right? How many companies have we seen? It's like, you know, they, sure. especially the subs on the job where they're, you know, you, you're talking to pencil pushers mm -hmm. to get your money and they want everything, eyes right. crossed and right. teased. Right. Everything yeah. has to be in perfect. Right. If one thing is not, you know they got to reject it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? but if you, you think of from your... So I know you, you guys are on the top of the food chain, right? You guys are the guys right. employing these guys. But from your point of view, and this is what I try to tell to the, the sub-trades, how can you approve something, right? How can you pay for something where the paperwork's not there? Mm -hmm. Right? You, you just got... He, he goes, hey, I did this work. And you're like, great. Thanks for doing the work. Can you just show us, give us the backup that you've done the work so I can pay yeah. you? And then they can't do that. Right. And then you're like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I can't approve it. If I approve it, like the bank's going to kill me or the the, the yeah. guy or whatever yeah. is, is going to kill me. So There's I a lot can't of layers. It's a lot of layers. Right. There's a lot yeah. of layers of approval sure. Sure. that have to go through. It's not just one signature that goes on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've had AIA contracts where 10 people had to sign off sure. on it sure. before yeah. the guy yeah. has to, can get a strike. Yeah. yeah. Construction yeah. supervisor. Sure. You know, it, yeah. it, there's a ton of people who have to look at that yeah. and approve it and, you know, say, yeah, this is what he's supposed to do. And now he gets his second or third payment down the line right yeah. that's usually how and no no one wants to be responsible for the mistake correct right so no one wants to be hey you didn't get back up for that thing why did you approve correct. it? you know correct and right so true so kid can you tell us about it or walk us through your procedure that let's say when you have a client uh you have this contract who's going to mm -hmm. enter in this agreement mm -hmm. and he's coming to you now and really most I would say, oh my God, uh, over 75, 80% of the contracts that I've gone through, especially with large projects, uh, have gone through a legal sure. uh, mm -hmm. review mm -hmm. from our lawyers, people that specialize in that. We all have mm -hmm. management law firms that do this. Mm -hmm. How do you different? How do you handle this? There's a couple of different layers, right? So mm -hmm. firstly, there's the skills and the tactics, right? I'm not going to talk about that first. First, uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is the beliefs, right? And and so you guys talk, oh, our legal team gets involved, blah, blah. So, so that should be enough for people to believe mm -hmm. that you guys are willing to negotiate. So yeah. many subcontractors think that if I try to negotiate, they're just going to go to someone else. Where the reality yeah. is, you're expecting these guys to negotiate. They they should negotiate. Yeah. And oftentimes, if they don't negotiate, and they say it's mm -hmm. a new contractor you've never dealt with before, it's a big project, and they mm -hmm. don't negotiate. It's a red flag, should be a red flag for you guys, if they don't try and negotiate, because then clearly they've not done, they've not played this game before. Correct, correct. And so from their point of view, they're expecting you to negotiate. And you're going to give them a contract, typically you, probably, you should, this, this is the game, that is in your favor. And then they need to come back and say, no, this doesn't work for me, this doesn't work for me. This is the game, this is what happens. The game is being played, whether you want to play it or not. If you decide not to play it, you just Always. you're just giving away stuff and yeah. just from a results point of view we've done over four thousand of these over and back reviews right so the sub tray going to you coming back mm -hmm. and i just want to just emphasize that our average statistic is we agree to 82 percent of what we put forward right so okay 82 percent of what we put forward gets agreed so again, that shows you that you can negotiate and people are willing to negotiate. Sure. And a lot of times we've got two different people playing. We've got you guys, right? Specifically, you two, who want to get the work done. You, your focus, I, I don't care about these contracts, right? I just want to get the job done, right? Exactly. Like, then you've got someone in the middle, probably, a lawyer or someone on the team who, right. that's not his priority. His priority is what we talked about before. I don't want to be the guy who said this was fine and then it turns around that yeah. it wasn't fine. So I'm not going to make, I'm going to, whatever. And then, so you're dealing with that as well. And so a lot of times, just them talking with you and you guys having the chat can be like, mm -hmm. 
yeah, I don't care about that. Uh, yeah, that's not a risk for me. And you can get right. rid of half of the stuff just because yeah, it right. doesn't actually apply to this specific exactly. contract. With AIA contracts, everyone thinks that they're standard, but they're not. They're all amended in your favor, right? They just right. look like a standard contract. But a lot of these contracts are like stock standards. So like the difference between an electrician and a plumber and oh, yeah. excavating company, steel fabrication company, facades, mm -hmm. specialist glass, all of the risks are different, right? So like, for example, a facade company who's going to put in windows and or whatever, or do a nice mm -hmm. facade. Like what's risky to them is probably the materials, the lead times, all yeah. of that sort of stuff, different to an electrician. Sure. So, but the contracts are kind of the same in the AIA, right? Generally. And so if you're putting on these massive obligations on an electrician to have his materials there on time, and it's like, oh, what what do you mean i'm I'm coming with my wire and wire. whatever <laughs> you know so it's just like that doesn't make sense so there's so many of those things that if you just sit down and go this doesn't make sense can we get it out of contract this doesn't make sense another one is a scaffolders right um, when you got right like you're putting what bridges the scaffold right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah right so a lot of times you like they'll be asked for a load of retention or retainer or some sort of security mm -hmm. right and that's typically for if something happens with the work that you can recoup the money after right, the right. fact, after they've done the job. But when they've when they've done the job, when they've left, they've left. Mm -hmm. Their job is access. So why are you holding right. all this money back for no right. reason? What are you going to do like with the money that you have? Like you're going to repair imaginary scaffolding that has left three months ago, right? Yes, Stuff, yeah. you know, but so, there is retainage. Are we talking about right, retainage. retainage on supplies? That's what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. So retainage right. for a scaffolder, mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't really make sense. Right, but a retainage on a, on an electrician would make sense because yes. you want to make sure that he comes know. back if he made a mistake for right. sure. Yeah, oh, well, big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and I that, get that because normally we call that as like a boilerplate, and you're saying, well, in the boilerplate of the of the AAA, it's standard stuff. So right. yeah, you can X out a lot of stuff that doesn't belong, and add. like you said, right to the the scaffolding guy as opposed to the electrician which totally makes sense yeah and so so many scaffolders and, that, and that, this is for all the different trades there's all of these little nuances but for the scaffolder he can get retainage out of the contract and explain mm -hmm. why it shouldn't be there bang his cash flow has increased by 10 percent, just like right. that right makes a huge difference right sure yeah. and trust me we don't want that scaffold up any more than it needs to be man we <laughs> exactly. want that down out of there goodbye we'll get, you know, we can negotiate about that absolutely mm -hmm. so how do you know which uh contract or what amendments are for i guess each individual contract there's yeah. like you said different mm -hmm. for electricians or anything how do you know what to ask for or what to negotiate in the, in that contract? So, so I know you. Have yeah, yeah. So we're not lawyers. We're construction people. So we know right. actual how things play out. And we negotiate it from that perspective. But what I just give you, what would you do if you were a, a sub trade, right? Um, in this scenario, what I would do is, well, firstly, if you go to the YouTube channel, right? So Key and Brennan, my YouTube channel, there's 16 videos explaining exactly what's in the contract, what you need to negotiate. So you can go and do that, oh. learn it yourself. The other way to do it is you can go to a lawyer, right? And you can sit there and you can pay like, you know, whatever you need to pay, right? To, to get this done, it's probably worth it. You can go to a construction lawyer and you can say, hey, what I want to do is I want to put a document together called My Commercial Principles. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is so I want you to walk me through everything in an AIA contract, your standard AI contract, and give me my position for each one of those items. Where do I stand as a company? And I'll explain to you the ins and outs of my company. And you go bam, yeah. bam, bam, bam. And so now you've got a document where you know where you stand on all of these things. Right. Right. And then with the price that they give to you guys, they can say very, very quickly, here's my price. It's based on the acceptance of these commercial principles. I know you're going to give me an AIA contract that's your own. You're not going to use my contract, right. but my price right. is based on these things. And that would be clearly explained. Like we're not, we, we never use language like remove this and do that and like bossy language. It's always explaining retainer doesn't make sense because we're a scaffolding company, right? The nature of the business right. is we've moved on, right? Therefore, we ask that there's no retainage, right? It's kind of that sort of language. And then that right. gives them a starting point to have a negotiation because you now know where they stand already before the contract's even been sent. And then mm -hmm. you can just speed the whole thing up really, really quickly. They can, you can just make the changes straight away that you're happy with 
things that you're not happy with, you can talk to them. You guys can talk to them, right? Without really involving the lawyers. Right. You might still involve the lawyers, of course, but that's your prerogative. But then it just makes the whole thing much swifter and their risk is going to be massively reduced. The uh, ability to add a lawyer, it's okay, but you can expect a huge delay. Well, yeah, time. They, they, and a it's time, huge sure. sum. Mm -hmm. You're looking yeah. at two, three, four hundred dollars an hour, you know, to pour over a hundred page documents, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure they're, and, and it, it's very time consuming. When you're in a crunch, and I'll give you an example, my building is that we missed the deadline for a swarm. So now it's considered sort of like unsafe, but really it's paperwork that has to be done. That's all. So yes, and I'm pushing and I'm pushing. I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And the answers I've always received, well, legal has it, or the lawyers are looking into it. The lawyers are looking into it. And mm -hmm. it's taking quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. Now, Kian, I'm nice. getting it. I'm getting, getting it. Getting there. You're telling me, okay, you have a very short turnaround. Yeah, we have 48 hours. Because oh. uh, very Ow. simply, right? So... How does he do this? How does he do this? What is kind of magician this guy? So, so his, his, their lawyers or our lawyer, law firm, they do all sorts of stuff, right? Everything. Litigation. Yeah. Just like, you know, their, their money is going to court, right? That's where they make their big yeah. bucks, right? Sure. So yeah. these kind of contract reviews are not money earners for them, really. It's small fry. They probably won't even have someone good doing it. They'll probably have a, an intern or someone doing this sort of stuff or else it's a smaller type of a company that does this stuff but for for us it's all we do and so right. as an individual lawyer might do one a month one every two months every day all day we do these things so from a turnaround from systems and procedures point of view we can just be incredibly quick to turn them around which means that mm -hmm. whenever you guys come back with your comments it's back to you again within 48 hours and so the time consuming part will never be the subject trade it'll probably be you guys right of course right oh yeah, yeah. Right. oh so again oh well i think we should give it to a lawyer let's take a look well, of course i mean look that's everybody's got to be covered right we i know that. everybody but they, do they all have to cover their butts and that's you know typical uh, uh the u.s and new york is very litigious okay. we have very liberal litigious laws you can sue anybody well, for any, anything well, you know. right exactly uh so yeah i think more people are afraid uh than anything just right. that they you know, we'll we'll spend thousands and thousands of dollars where we can right before you do even work. break ground. You're looking at a lot of places where you're building a building. You before you even breaking ground, you gotta have all this stuff in place. So yeah, you know, that does take time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our next question, really, and this one, you know, me and me and Bo were going back and forth if we were gonna ask it, but we're gonna ask it. What it. is the minimum amount that your company would do an AIA for? I mean, is it for the little guy? Is it for the medium sized guy? Is it for the big guy? Or it's just a big umbrella? Look, our, our 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 vision, our mission as a company is is to help. Like, I really believe that the the sub trades are like the bees of the construction industry, right? So, like, yes. you know, have you ever heard that Einstein thing where yes, if the bees go missing, all of a sudden, you yes. know, slowly yeah. we all left. get wiped out. Yeah. yeah. And so, if you think about it, the subcontractors are the only the guys that they're the only people that actually do construction work. Everyone else in the chain, you guys are trying to build something. You're trying to you know, have a, a finished product. You don't. You're not right. in the game of, of refurbishing or building or you know yeah. building yeah. things. You're in the game of having an amazing building at the end of the day that has performs a function. Right. Then Realistically, the, we're owners yeah. reps. Exactly. That's what we do. Yeah. yeah. And so these guys do the construction. So our our mission is to help these companies not go out of business to to take them from their knees to, to their feet as an industry and be able to push back and not be bullied and not not be pushed around. So we will help on, on an individual basis, any sort of company. But our our sweet spot yeah. as a company is is someone doing about $5 million and above, because yeah. we will what we can do is if you if you ask us to do one review for you for and just be super honest, for us to make any money on that, we got to charge more for that one off. Yeah, right. Whereas if you're doing one a month, one or two a month or three a month, right? And so people are always yeah. bidding on jobs anyway. So that's that's right. reasonable. So you might win all of them, but you you still need to review the contracts for the ones that you're bidding for. Then we we can do a retainer, which is very attractive. Right. So one a month is about like if you agree to one a month is about one thousand six hundred a month. Hmm. Okay. I mean Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, it's another reason why there's really 
every company is no longer a construction company. Yeah, right. <laughs> they are now all of them into yes. construction management. Management, right. Mm. right. Nobody's a, nobody is a construction. Nobody builds anything anymore. They manage projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all the sub trades, all of them, yeah, they're the ones who need you. Yeah. They're so, the ones who need that protection. And the, okay. those guys that you're talking uh, about are like right. finance companies, right? If you, if you think about yeah. it, they are actually finance companies with, with a nice construction badge. So if you think of Turner, yeah. for right. example, Turner, the biggest cats, right? Really? Mm -hmm. And or what, what? I don't know. Can you name a big construction company off the top of your head? Lendlease. Lendlease. Lend yeah, Lend 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 we work with two of them. <laughs> we know Lendlease. We know Lendlease Lend Lend very into. Yes. Lendlees are huge in Australia as well, by the way. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're neck of the woods. Ma massive, <laughs> right. massive companies. So Lendlees are, so what, what, like Lendlees don't do any construction, right? right. Uh, for the most part, they win a project from you. They get a loan from the bank. They subcontract out all the work and they make the money on the Delta on okay. the difference between the loan and the right. money that you guys pay them. That's it. Right. So they're, right. they're, they're, they're a finance company. It's, it's financial yeah. arbitrage. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And so if you look no at it, construction companies building stuff. Right, 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 yeah. right. And so you're, you're, if you look at it from that point stuff. of view, if that's the type of company that you uh, these sub trades are dealing with, they're dealing with that type of company. Then mm -hmm. you got to realize that they make money on on the difference between the two of them, which means if they cannot pay you to save money, money. they're going to make money. Right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's the name of the game. We we were in those meetings. We were in those arguments. Boy, we, oh, oh, man. Oh, boy. Every Wednesday. Was yeah. it Wednesday? Every yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday. It was like, come on, Frank, let's go. We got a battle. You know, that's basically what it right. was. And we were always on the owner's side. So not really. Um, at, and in our positions, I don't even think uh, the only reason we would care about a subcontract that is the kind of work that he is doing. Right. right. Or if, if unless he's very poor, right. uh, you know, uh, in his uh, abilities, you know, otherwise we really wouldn't uh, interface with them. We deal mm -hmm. with the project managers mm -hmm. and they're the ones who deal with uh, others. Right. And, and like you said before, it, you know, it comes down to us looking at something and then signing off on it so that this person can get their next yeah. check. Because yeah. if we don't agree to it, you know, once we're reading it and we're looking at whatever it was built, we're like, wait a minute, you know, this doesn't coincide with what you signed and what you said right. you we're going to do mm -hmm. and what you truly did do. Our mm -hmm. punch listing is, sure. is yeah. you know, uh, at the end of the, that's where it is. At the end of the project, you know, if you're not going to do it correctly. So, so one, of the, one of the things I, I, I try to emphasize to a lot of our clients or to, so, so, to, to anyone in general, even you guys, is that like, I am sure you did not get into your game to be doing this stuff, right? There's no way. And typically in the the, the construction companies, if if you've grown a, a scaffolding business, is, I guess is what we're talking about at the moment, you started off as a scaffolder and then you were good at what you did and then you got a good reputation, you built a bit of a team and like you're right. typically these guys are that type of person. They're real, you know, go-getters, doers, hard workers. That's and then where their business starts to get shaky and topple and it's when they start getting these bigger projects maybe from you guys and then all of a sudden it there's another layer of you move from being in construction to being in the business of construction which means that this yeah. sort of stuff matters and then that's how they get burnt because they like oh no i'll just do an amazing job and they mm -hmm. do an amazing yeah. job but then they don't get paid for it because they get done over on this sort of stuff which is so right. important for these guys so Regardless of which, whether you like it or not, it needs to be done in some capacity. Like you guys give it to your lawyers, I get it. But in some capacity, it needs to be done. And that's something I, I really try to, to emphasize to these guys that if you're not doing it, you're going to get bitten at some stage. Right. Right. Um, and what is their recourse? You know, they're going to go and try to file a lien mm -hmm. uh, yeah. on the building. You know, and right. it only works so much and so far. Then mm -hmm. they would have to go back. And then what does the contractor or the construction company or, you know, the owner do? Well, you know what? I'll pay you 50 cents of the dollar and uh, you take, take your it. thing. That's and it. That's, I mean, that, that's disputes, right? Yeah. So let's just put in a lien or whatever. It ultimately funds, falls under the category, I'm, I'm in a dispute. And right. from again, we've done so many of these. I can tell you categorically from data that when you're in the dispute, the ship has sailed. You are already in the shit, basically. Right. 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 And so it's, right. it's it's a race to see who loses the least amount of money now. That's it. Yeah. That's all it is, it's right? The and, owner. Uh, that's it. And so no one wants to be in a dispute because everyone's going to lose money except for the lawyers, obviously. Yeah. 
Right. So if you have that kind of, let's say, and, and, and this just hit me in the head when, when you were saying it. So let's say the bank is holding in retain. It's for you, right? I'm the scaffolding mm -hmm. guy and, and they're holding a hundred thousand dollars, right? Of that money. But you settled at 50 cents on the dollar or not. Does, what does the bank then, then just say, all right, well, the balance is not going to the builder. Where, where does that go? On, uh, on, if we're just talking about retainage or, or if we just, yeah, just in the general, portion of it. yeah, well, let's just, it, let's just, it. well, if you settle them 50%, uh, let's, let's just take the retainage out because it gets complicated how the bank disperses it and stuff. But let's just say there's okay. a dispute, you're owed 100 grand and then you agree to 50. Right. The reality of what actually happens in real life is you'll just knock the 50 off their final invoice. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. That, that's what happens. So yeah. construction management. Our contracts management is almost a very simple game is that I'll tell you an analogy. It's, it's a, it's a football analogy to real football, by the way, which is where you actually oh, kick, no. kick, Here we go. Here kick, we go. Kick, on, kick a football, right? Really? Not, not your football where you throw it with your hand, right? Not your foot. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking rugby, but you went the other way. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm a big rugby man as well. But um, yeah, no, so you're talking about soccer, we call yeah, no, 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 yeah. talking about rugby. No, I'm talking about soccer. I'm talking about soccer. I'm oh, talking about football. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 let me tell you, rugby is a, a hell of a lot tougher than soccer. Well, well, look, go sure, ahead, I'll give sure. you that. And then as we're speaking, the Rugby World Cup is on right now. Ireland are currently number one in the world. So that's something I'm very proud go. of, being an Irish man and having a little country <laughs> that, that's doing so well. But anyway, I, I digress. But there's a football manager in the, in the UK, right? One of the most successful of all time. His name is a guy called Alex Ferguson. And he yeah. talks about a phrase called squeaky bum time, right? And squeaky bum time is... And I'll go, go back into your football terminology is it's all about the final quarter. And it's right, and yeah. he was referring to when people in the stadium start to sit on the edge of their plastic seats and shuffle yes. and it makes a squeaky noise. Right. That's when it matters. Right. And in construction, it's all about the final quarter. All disputes, mm -hmm. everything happens in that final quarter. And what typically happens, the game is you get to the final invoice or near the final invoice or the final payment or whatever you want to call it. And what happens is someone goes, we're not paying you. Right. And if you don't have the backup, if you haven't done all the right stuff, then you're in a bad position. And it's offsetting right. that final invoice is where it almost right. always happens. Right. Someone will say, we're not paying you that. And then they say, well, I need it. And if you're in cash flow trouble, you need the money so badly that you'll accept a shitty deal. Right. 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 And so right. what you need to do is obviously have better cash flow, do all your paperwork so you don't find mm -hmm. So Ahead when time. people are trying to save money, those, those bigger companies are trying to save money, they look at you and go, okay, he's got all his paperwork in order. I'll right. look for savings somewhere else. Right, right. Yeah. And you're the first one, you're the first one in line getting your check so that you, yeah. you don't, you know, you don't, you're not yeah. getting the crumbs as we say. That's it. And then the, the other analogy that's very important is the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Right. right. If you're the guy with the paperwork, doing the thing, chasing your money, right, mm -hmm. you're going to get paid. If you're not, you don't have those systems in place to do that. You're going to be down to peck in order. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Can you explain, you have on your website, the one page flow chart mm -hmm. that you present? I, I thought it was fascinating. So I just wanted to hear from, uh, from you. So the first part is negotiating good contracts. So let's assume that you've done that, right? right. Great. Next thing is you got to, you got to do what the contract says, right? And we're not mm -hmm. talking about the deliverables of what your service. We're talking mm -hmm. about the terms and conditions of the contract says that you need to do certain stuff. So if you need to get a change order approved, you need to follow steps. If you need yeah. to get a delay approved, you need to follow steps. If there's a dispute, mm -hmm. you need to follow steps. It's all very clear, but it's all in that legal mumbo jumbo terminology. This section, this clause refers to this other clause right. and you can find yourself in the golden circle. So what we do is right. we get a, we, we do two documents actually. Document number one is we get all the important stuff that's in the contract, get rid of all of the jargon and put it into bullets. Here's exactly all of the obligations that you have in the contract. Wow. Step one. Step two is the flowchart, right? You, there's a change on site. You need to, you need to do this document, you need to do this document and you need to do it within these days and that's how it needs to be done. So the flow chart. Part of our, our post contract award service will do all of that for you, but to do that yourself, then you have those flow charts if you want to do it yourself. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. When it's right there in front of your face, boom, right. boom, boom, boom. Right. And you don't have to go back and start searching where subtract sure, right, right, yeah, exactly. whatever. And, and so when, yeah. the other one is when you finish the job, 
right some people are like oh, i finished the job and i was like well have you have you followed the procedure like for getting your completion certificate or your your substantial yeah. completion mm -hmm. practical complete? have you done that no oh well maybe do that yeah. you know <laughs> there you go i have to ask you even with the funny accent, you do a lot of work. Whoa, in the hold US. on. You got two guys from Brooklyn saying, I've got a funny accent. Right? I, know, right? I know, I know, I know. The world oh, yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. Resolve, revolve around about, New York. What are you talking about? What are you talking, talking about? about? The major differences you see, I'm not even talking about Australia, New Zealand, or Canada, US, mm. from city to city. Yeah, yeah. You know, is it easier to do this in New York or Texas? Or I don't know, California, Tennessee. Tennessee's booming too with construction. Uh, Tennessee's booming. What yeah. the fuck are you doing in Tennessee? Tennessee's booming. Trust me, I was just there. What are you, <laughs> Nashville? What are you, country music? What tell the him. hell? Tell him, please tell him. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I think Wyoming is booming as well. By the way, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. Go. Wow. another one. But there you go. So, honestly. In the U.S., there's 50 different laws. It's a sense we talked about this before, right? There's like this. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is so big, basically economy-wise. U.S. is is half of the whole world. The rest of the world is the other half of of account of GDP economies. U.S. is half of the world economy wise, right? So wow. U.S. on so big. Take that China. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, and even, so even, China even on the rise, to, though. Let's face it, China yeah, on the rise. Yeah, I know. I know. But even compared to Dubai, I mean, Dubai has had an explosion. Have they just nothing? Stopped? Nothing. No, not even nothing. Close. Really? Not even. No. Not even nearly. No. Not like. Yeah. But and then, so uh, each each. each yeah. Like, like it depends state by state, but like U.S. is fifty different countries essentially from from a market yes. point of view, right? It, re right. it really is, and you've okay. got fifty different laws. Now, the thing about construction is to dumb it out. Everyone thinks that it's so complicated, so many different laws, right? But if you can imagine, we have it like up the top here, you have the law of the state, right? And then you have the contract, right? And the sort of contract that you're given needs to comply with the law. So I'm not saying every different law has different new nuances, but generally, when we're looking at the contract, contracts mm -hmm. themselves all have the same principles. It's all of the same stuff in construction. It's the same mm -hmm. problems and the same problems have, here's the clause to deal with that problem. And so the commercial principles are almost okay. all the same. Does that make sense? It's just that yes. if you ever yeah. have to go, so and like our job, uh, candidly, is is to keep you out of court, keep you out of dealing with the law and keep you within the contract that you've signed yourself. Because the, the right. contract that you've signed yourself will dictate how you deal with a dispute, how you deal with mm -hmm. this, how you deal with that. So as long as you don't actually have to go to law, go to court, have a, a right. lawyer argue for you, then as long as you're just in the confines of that contract, then you're okay. Uh -huh. And then you can understand what you do. You don't need to learn, you don't need to know all the different laws and all the different stuff because the contract itself will be specific on what you need to do. Wow. Uh, we always thought, and we always say, uh, you can be anywhere in the United States, but New York City yeah. is its own separate animal sure. to deal yeah. with. It's its own country, you know, basically. Yeah, like from, it, from, I, an I, yeah, from an economy yeah, point yeah, of view. From an economy point of view. True. But it also, yeah. I, th I think more so because we have so much bureaucracy you know that we have to follow and wait for and wait for per we got to pull so many oh, different forget. permits and mm -hmm. you know it's, that we have to have a separate expediter just for all it is you know in, in each stage you go through all of a sudden you got huge businesses doing that mm -hmm. you know and, uh, you're Mark, expedited i could be speaking directly from from my behind on this one right but my view on that is so new york and a lot of the american cities are quite old and i don't mean oh like the us in general is new as a, as a country in the grand scheme of things in comparison to england let's say but in the developed world you like the us was kind of the first major developed superpower with all laws and all of that sort of stuff so you guys were almost right. the first so that you're still right. dealing with some of these older laws that you put in place years and years ago and and paperwork that hasn't been revamped so some of the right. the newer yes. economies yeah. like for example australia have you hit it have kind of now we have, like the best way to describe is we have new buildings and new roads only because there was nothing there before 
right? <laughs> and, uh, and so you guys are predominantly in the, like, you're not building new things more so. You're refurbishing old things and upgrading sure. things. Yes. And that's kind of sure. where you yes. are as an economy. Right. I, I was, uh, interesting, quite a few years back, I was speaking to some German investors that were coming to take a look at the building I was in. And they're like, why do you guys hang on to these old buildings for? I said, well, you know, it's, uh, we have landmarks, we have mm -hmm. this, and some people try to explain. He goes, no, 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 just tear it down, bring up new. I'm like, my God, is that all you guys do over there? That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, again, why are we doing, there's so many different old, sure. like you said, old laws that are sure. from the 70s and 60s that don't even apply anymore. Older. You know, older. Yeah. I mean, you look at states where, you know, earthquake earthquakes happen and they're mm -hmm. still going back to old style construction and not yeah. moving to the 21st century I, you well know, I, I, well the, the changes have been made new york got hit with hurricane sandy a few years ago and now anybody on that coast anybody in that line all of a sudden their houses, houses yeah, right. yeah four feet right. up you know you got to be on pylons yeah. you know well you're not going to get in see anything in new york or the states revolves around insurance sure mm -hmm. okay you're not going to get in your California, home insured yeah. Look at Florida now, mm, yeah. all of these uh, floods they're having, yeah. all these hurricanes, mm. whatever. Insurance companies are pulling out. Yeah. And yeah, if you don't have that. Things basic, are uninsurable these days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. But in, in contrary to that is, I will uh -huh. say that there is an argument to be said about doing new stuff and having modern stuff. I get that argument as well. But there's also stuff, I mean, if you look at England, I guess, and, and you look at some of the, the cities in Europe and stuff, it's an amazing thing for a society, not an economy, for a society to have an old building that is beautiful. And it maybe mm -hmm. mightn't be that purposeful, but it's beautiful and it makes the society very nice when you have these kind of pillars of a beautiful building. That's something I don't think we do anymore. We just build these buildings. And, yeah, if you, I, and then I, if you go to Dubai, I've been to Dubai a lot. I lived in the Middle East for almost five years. There is an element where it's devoid of a feeling of a culture or, culture or, or, yeah. culture's probably not the right word, but you know what I mean? You don't feel like it's yeah, a real yeah, I know city. Exactly it's all mean, yeah. so new or yeah. Uh, you go down to the souks over there and uh, the old marketplaces, you might get a little bit of what it used to be, exactly. but everything is clean, clean. It's fantastic. London is a great analogy for you where you have all the older mm. buildings mm. that were built and yet you have these beautiful skyscrapers that are actually uh, amazing. And laced in between. Yeah, yeah. Yes, in between. Yeah. In and I think it's fantastic. Mm. Mm. You know, well, I mean, we have it here in New York too, because that's yeah, what that's yeah. what our landmarks are. We're preserving that history. I know, I know, and really, some of them shouldn't be preserved. Well, true, true. <laughs> but, to go, yeah, to go yeah. through landmarks is not easy. Yeah, right? here in New York, going through landmarks is not an easy. So uh, costly and yeah. everything else on yeah. there. You know what I really want to find out from him, man. Mm. You know, he knows Kanye. <laughs> I don't know. If I don't know if he wants to be proud. Of uh, no, he's got to be proud of this. Come on. I Come do on. not know Kanye. Good work. Yeah. He, when he was in New York, this is what happens when you come to New York right. and hang out here and stay here. This guy worked on Wall Street, man. There you go. You know? That's nice. Good. Kind of. Tell him what you did on Wall Street, buddy. Ian, you keep saying yeah. that. <laughs> the first thing is I went to Vancouver for a summer, right? And the reason you go to Canada, and I'll be honest, is when you're 18, 19, right? You can drink there, right? So whenever oh, people yeah, are in yeah. university... People go on their holidays and they go to Canada because if it goes to the US, we can't drink, <laughs> right? So that's an important thing to consider. When I was 21, I was like, right, we're going to the US, got the J1 visa, went over. I think I was there for, I can't remember, five five or six months, or maybe, maybe yeah, r roughly around that. Yeah, reason so I, worked, I can't remember. Yeah, but so, <laughs> so worked on Wall Street, but as a laborer on a construction site, <laughs> right? So not, not stockbroking at all or anything, anything fancy. Right. But when, when you met somebody, you would say, Hey, yeah, I work on Wall Street. I work on Wall Street. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so works. lived in Queens, he's traveling every day. Uh, it was like really, really enjoyed it. But I was working in the, the Cipriani or the Cipriani buildings, not exactly sure how to pronounce it, Cipriani building. And um, then the bottom, they've got like, you know, a theater and a, a place where you can perform. And up above it, well, there are all of these apartments that I was working on. These were like super fancy high-end apartment that had like TV. At the time, this is like 20 years ago, 20 more than, yeah, roughly 20 years ago. And they had like TVs at the end of the bath and they had like just beautiful marble everything and i think what one of my jobs was they had these lovely brown flooring oak or something in my job because they scratched stuff putting oh, furniture yeah. in my job mm -hmm. was to go with a marker 
and be on the ground just filling in these little marks. Like that was my job. You still right? do that. We'll do it. Right? You still we do still that. Do that. <laughs> so <laughs> that was that was my job, right? So it wasn't particularly but anyway, one day I was I was working away and I just heard this, you make me money. I'm like, what is that? It's like, well, now I need. I'm like, what is that? And so just being curious, <laughs> good, yeah, I walked around and there was a door and the door led me into the Cipriani building, right? The actual concert part of it. And it was it was Kanye West practicing before a gig that night that he was going to have and it was going to be a big dinner and he was going to be the guy. <laughs> and so I went down and I saw him do his whole set and I was like, you know, just just a meter away, just right there. And I was like, that's that's so cool. So that, that's my yeah. Kanye story. Yeah. yeah. And that was pre Kardashian, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was when he was he was pretty good then, I think. Yeah, <laughs> not bad at all, not bad at all. Oh man! Oh, so we got to put him on the spot with a WTF moment. Oh, okay. this guy, you you know about our WTF moment? I do it not. Is... I do not. Oh wait, hold on. The WTF moment is what the Frank, you know, because of him. A moment where in any day life or any the incidents or anything that happened to you, you just stand back and say. What the Frank? Did that really happen? You yes, know, did I it got, really do that? Some I got kind one. Of, oh, they, see? I got one. It's everything oh. like that. Come on, this, and this is a million of them. Yeah, yeah, but this this is not construction. This is this is yeah. What what the Frank? Right. So yesterday morning, like we live in a, in a suburban place, like it's you know family sort of area, and it's just kind of you nice. know. And I'm walking down to the cafe. I haven't had my coffee yet, right? I had earphones in my ears, and I have got this big woolly jumper on, and I'm, I'm looking scrub. I look like I haven't had a coffee yet, basically. I, I come down to my street. At the end of my street, there's this, there's a, there's a, there's, the whole thing is cornered off with police and there's uh, reporters. And um, I'm like, what is going on? So I, I, so I was like, oh, you know, this is interesting. You know, this is like big deal, big news, right? Like this, this right. stuff doesn't happen, right? I was like, oh, what is this? So I like, look, I got to send a photo to my wife and be like, anyway, these reporters see me, right? And and they must be, <laughs> they must have been like, I don't know like five full of those big cameras right and yeah, yeah. Then, <laughs> right and they all flock over to me and they're like do you know what happened last night and i'm like no i don't they're like we are you willing to be on tv to be a reporter i was like yeah but i i don't know anything like that like, don't worry about that they literally said don't worry, don't worry about, about that, that. <laughs> right i'm like okay did you hear anything i was like yeah i heard sirens like last night and i, I thought it was there's a fire big station near me i thought it was the fire station they're like all oh, right will you will you say that on camera i was like all oh, right sure so they cool. just asked me and then uh, gave me the sound button and, and they like literally they're so, like so bad they put words in my mouth right and i was like I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so it was they said so after you heard the screaming right <laughs> something happened right after you heard the screaming tell us about this the the sirens and how quick did yeah. they come and i'm like i didn't hear any screaming <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the long story short, uh, they got me and um, it was on the news last night. My little four second clip it like local man, go. local resident, right? Talks. And I'm just there, like, I look, I look completely bewildered. Like I'm like, what is going on? Like uh, anyway, it got it got screenshotted and sent around to all family and friends and everyone's Beautiful. taking the piss out of me. So that's that's my what, yeah. the, what the Frank that happened yesterday. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. See? Oh, man. I'm done. Uh, Excellent. Excellent. Frank, uh, uh, Kyan, we want to thank you very much. Ian! You I said Ian! Ian! You said Kyan! I did it on purpose. <laughs> I want to see if he was listening. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so bad at this. This is what happens when you ask him. Go ahead. I'm not. I'm not. That's this it. What, this is what happens when you 60. Don't turn 60. <laughs> That's next year, damn it. Kyan? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Ah, I was waiting. Can't, 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 can't. If I say it 20 times, it'll work. Get it right. Okay, so yeah. say goodbye. I'm going to start. Yeah, yeah, Kian, 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 Kian. <laughs> well, Kian, look, uh, we want to thank you very much for, for yeah. coming on and, and, and teaching us. And, and we always say this on our show. All our guests, they, we, you know, we, we've been doing this long. But between both of us, how long? If you combine our experience, oh, there's over God. 70 years of experience yeah. doing this stuff. Uh, we know each other over 40 years. We went to high school together. So, yeah. and we always learn from our guests. And 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 again, this is no exception. Uh, you know, we all right? absolutely. This, 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 and, and this is actually a very very yeah. good thing that you're yeah, doing yeah. with quantum i think this for the subcontractors here in the states and mm -hmm. i guess everywhere else that you're working this is something that's really useful 
Sure, 100. percent This cuts back on their red tape, on their knowledge, yeah. and everything else, where they don't have to go to a freaking mm-hmm. lawyer. So I'm sorry, guys, but you know, lawyers. Upset yeah, that's me. what we're here for. To get um, that information out. So uh, exactly, you know. and we're going to be very happy to to represent this and say it to all of our friends. Man. And so, so quantum contract solutions. Absolutely, 100%. and we're going to have your contact on our show, and we're going to make sure we have your correct phone number. Yeah, yeah. and correct pronunciation of the name. <laughs> I apologize. I'm brutal. You, you know, can just, you, can go, um, you can go formal. You can go Mr. Brennan if, if, if it's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have went with that. Why didn't you go with that? You're right. <laughs> Damn it. You're right. Sorry, man. You're right. Ah. And where, where can people, what's your website? You know, what, what, what email or website would you want, you know, people to, to reach yeah. you, reach you at now? Firstly, just the first thing we want to do is make a difference, right? So, you know, if you want to do this stuff yourself, you want to learn it yourself, you should do that anyway. You should learn it yourself. We've got a podcast called Construction Secrets. If you just Google my name, C-I-A-N, Brennan, you'll find the, the podcast is a YouTube channel that has the kind of the same stuff. And it's just about, yeah. it's war stories about construction. It is um, all of the individual little things that you need to do. And just by listening, you're going to upskill yourself and you're going to under, start understanding the money side of construction is what I like to say. Mm-hmm. So check out the podcast, check out the YouTube channel, or you can go to Quantum Contracts solutions.com and there's there's a video on that and on that just check it out and if it works for you great and if you can do it yourself do that too excellent and i think your dad and granddad would be proud yeah absolutely we're all proud of you thanks you know, buddy. this uh, is uh, yeah cool yeah very well thank you yeah absolutely thank you thank you for being on uh, we greatly greatly appreciate it mr uh, brennan yeah <laughs> should have told me that from the beginning dude okay all right <laughs> all right man have a great day frank we're out of here. Yeah, absolutely. We're okay. Out. Just remember that we are, uh, you'll have the episode out every week. Yeah. We yeah. are on uh, buildingtalknyc.com. <laughs> and you can also, you know, you can always yeah. send us a, an email at uh, yeah. buildingtalk123 at Gmail, of course. We're still on X. You know, we don't yeah. use it much, but, you know, in, in our Instagram page and, you know, Facebook reaches up all the normal places. We're expanding. Yeah. So we check expanding. out the website. And of course, uh, YouTube. Tell you on YouTube. And the show will be on uh, soon. And, Uh, Thank you for... uh, Right. And remember, as always, good listening. Later.